Uh, happy Thursday. Let's get this fucking thing going. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 127 for Thursday, the 11th of May, 2017. This is your two lifelong friends and their guests, or not, celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. How you doing, fucko? I'm good, man. This is this is kind of cool. This is, you know, we, we were going to have a guest, but instead we're going to kick it old school, just like we used to do, just the two of us, just yep. two lifelong friends geeking out about just whatever the fuck we feel like talking about. Uh, whatever and random we shit we had time to put in the show notes this week, that's what you're talking about? <laughs> but yeah, that. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, we, we, uh, we were we were supposed to have Mollywood on tonight, and the communication somehow broke down. So we will attempt to reschedule her for another time because she's been on our list since we created a list of possible guests. Um, that being said, whatever is going on there, hopefully she's doing well and uh, and uh, uh, amazing as always. But we have some random shit to talk about today, man. Some random oh, like shit, boys. man. Do you feel old? I know you do. Yes. God damn <laughs> I mean, you look old. I hope you don't feel as old as you look. Um, I probably feel a lot older than I look. <laughs> God damn, it sucks. <laughs> Just being honest. <laughs> Man, I've been feeling super old lately. Like Especially this week, it's all kind of coming to a head. Um, my oldest son is graduating high school two weeks from tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. And about a week after that, he's turning 18. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's also a thing. Uh, man. See, now I have, I have a one year advantage on you on this because my oldest won't graduate until next year. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. God, God, I hope so. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so tell me, let's, let's get into the psychology of, uh, of having a child graduating high school real quick. Um, now, how old do you actually feel? Because you're you're 39 years old. You haven't quite turned 40 yet. That's uh, right. that's gonna be like the day after Nerdtacular. Um, so, how old do you feel physically? Usually, I, I feel probably like 30. Well, no, 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 no. See, that's that's not a good answer. Now, what we need break that down into dice rolls. So that'd be like, uh, uh, I'll give you the first one because, because I know you're new at this and, and dice aren't quite your thing. Um, so that'd be like a, a 30 plus or minus, or a, a, a 30 to 28 plus 1d4. A 30 plus 1d4. No, no, a 28. Well, actually, a 20, a 27 plus 1d4. Okay. Would that be about, about how you feel typically, physically? I would say usually, or at least until like the last year or so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to get some of the the you know breakdown, like bodily breakdown type stuff, where you know less energy, less like mostly just less of everything except pain. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that's not to say that I you know I'm not in a situation um, like you are where I I have to deal with chronic pain. That's that's not a thing. It's just right. the uh, you know, sometimes I'll I'll like be stepping out of the shower, and all of a sudden my back decides that it's not gonna do what it's supposed to do. Right. Or okay. I'll get out of so, bed, and a knee just won't. So wanna so mentally, in- mentally, give me your your uh, your D and D age range. Ah, um, I would say most days probably mm-hmm. about um fifty five. Plus or minus one d four. No, you can't go plus or minus one d four. No, no. Why not? Like, cause you can't minus a die. Sure, you can. No, that, that, no, no. People are high when they're playing D anD D. You can't start throwing multiple symbols in there. Like, you can't go. You can't go eight times one d four. This is like trying to trying to explain Thacko to it's, a high person. Not that you've ever had to do that before. N- no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you pronouncing the zero as an O? <laughs> hey, man, I had to, I mean, that person had to know. 
It's <laughs> an important question. So, 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 so what you're saying is, uh, <laughs> the lower is the better. So I'm getting the good gear so I can get a lower score. Uh, this is like golf. Oh yeah. man. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So I would say I would say like uh, 53 plus 1d4. Okay. Okay. So you're getting a, a range of uh, 54 to 57 there. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that sounds that sounds that sounds pretty good. Um, I would go. Uh, Joe Mon says I'm 43 and feel 73. So, so he's he's uh, he's like a, a 53 plus 1d20. Um, <laughs> I uh, I would this say is, that this is, the time, this is the time you don't want to roll a 20. <laughs> <laughs> Critical hit on age. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to confirm the crit? Oh shit! <laughs> um, oh, shit. I would say typically uh, I, I probably feel about thirty-five plus minus or plus one d four. Uh, okay. Well, one one d ten rather. Sorry. And um, mentally, I think I'm about uh, seventy plus one d twenty. Let's go. Let's go. Sixty plus two d twenty. There you go. Because some days, some days I just oh, can feel God. completely feeble. That's um, pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I'm. I'm not happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> All when's right. So, the, uh, when's the old surgery that's supposed to like take care of some of that? Um, tomorrow. Uh, I'm having surgery on my knee tomorrow. Um, in the early afternoon, I believe. Um. So, yeah. So if you roll a 20 on that surgery, like how fixed are you? I'll be running by the end of summer. Like that's running, just, just regular running. Something I haven't been able to do in a few years. Without pain? Yeah. It should be, should be fairly pain free. I mean, I've still got some, some tendon damage. that's never going to get quite repaired, you know, some tendonitis or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, should be good to go. Um, if it doesn't go well, then I mean, I'm already. I mean, I'm not running, so <laughs> <laughs> it probably he, won't get worse. Here's the part that really kills me. This is the, this is the thing that just God it fucking pisses me off. I am mostly fine the way I am. I can walk. Sometimes I walk with pain. I can walk. I can lightly jog short distances. Usually without pain. But in order to be an active member of the Air Force, I have to be able to run on a regular basis at a fairly quick pace. So I'm I'm having part of my body reconstructed tomorrow, the internals of my knee redone so that I can continue my career for another two years. Wait, and this is a good thing? Fuck no. <laughs> oh my God. So, I'm, I'm so done so with it. So what you're saying is that the, if the surgery is a complete failure, it's not a completely bad thing. You know, I'm hedging my bets. <laughs> <laughs> so no matter what, there's a bright side of this thing. Yeah. It, um, you know, it, there, there, there's always something, right? There's always something. Um, so with, with Lucas graduating... Um, how do you, how does that make you feel, man? How does that make you feel? Uh, well, really old. Uh, it's, it's really bizarre, man, because. How old did you think your mom was? Like, how old did you perceive her as when you graduated? Uh, that's I mean, a weird thing because uh, moms are moms. You know what I mean? Like mom has always been old because she's mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Like oh, when you're fair enough. Old mom is old, and then <laughs> when you're when you're a senior in high school, mom is old, and when you're forty, mom is old. You know, uh, so I don't, I don't know. That's a weird, that's a weird space in my brain to try to to try to think about how old my mom seemed. Right. Uh, I mean, she was probably she was probably like mid forties when I graduated high school, so yeah. a little bit older than me. Uh, maybe like, actually she might've been around 50 actually. Hmm. So like, like at least nearing 50. Uh, so, so a bit older than me. Um, 
I don't know, but that always seemed right to me. I'm not even 40, and I'm about to have an adult child. That's, that's a just a that's just a weird. I don't know, man. It's really hard to get my head around it because he is going to be legally an adult. He'll be able to uh, vote. He'll be able to uh, join the military. Uh, sign legal documents himself. Like right. I mean, it's it's mind blowing. Uh, <sighs> mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'll let you know in a few weeks when it when it's <laughs> really. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Um. So this this is uh, I'm, I'm getting back to the age thing. I'm going to tell you how old I am. I went to a neurosurgeon to talk about my back, and of course she said, well, well, let's wait until you're done with your knee, and then we'll figure it out, which is kind of what I expected her to say. Um, okay. Uh, leaving there, I went to go grab some lunch because I had my pre-op appointment immediately following. So I went to go grab some lunch. I saw Taco Bell. It's like, hey, I could, I, could, I could go for some chicken tacos. I like chicken tacos. I like Mountain Dew. They have both of those there. I can go do that. So I pull into the, uh, the Taco Bell parking lot, Grab my phone this, this in my headphones. Is this a cantina that serves beer? It is not, unfortunately. Oh, damn um, it. Okay. You don't have those up here in, in Alaska. <sighs> the northernmost southern state, that's what I like to call it. So um, I get out of my truck. I grab my phone and my headphones because I'm thinking while I'm eating some lunch, I'll, I'll keep listening to some podcasts and stuff like that. It's cool. I get out mm -hmm. of my truck and look across the street and there's Taco Bell. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you... For a brief second, I was like, well, how the hell are there two Taco Bells right next to each other on the street? It wasn't a Taco Bell. It was a Wendy's. Um, so I got back in the truck and I crossed the street. And as I'm getting out of my truck the second time in the actual Taco Bell parking lot, I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I haven't eaten at Wendy's in for like forever. Like I can't remember the last time I was in a Wendy's. Right. Yeah. Same let's, here. Actually, Let's go eat some Wendy's. Like, why not? So I go back across the street, and I'm pretty sure the people that worked in both these establishments thought I was fucking nuts. Go back across the street, and I go inside. And let me tell you about my Wendy's experience. I look at their menu. Their menu's small. It's not in and out small, but it's definitely not McDonald's big. Like it's 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 on the lower end of the medium, of the medium scale. They have burgers. They got Dave's Classic Burger. They got Dave's Classic Double Burger or Double Classic Burger or whatever the hell it is. And they got the Baconator. And then they got the son of Baconator. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Well, I'm not really in the mood for a burger. But if I was in the mood for a burger, I'd want one that I hadn't tried before. So let's do that. Let's get the Baconator. Sounds good. Also, I know I love their fucking chili, so I want some chili. And I'm a fat kid, so give me some fries. <laughs> And a large drink. And you know what? Somebody's been talking about these damn chicken nuggets from Wendy's on the Twitter. This shit. I'm not going to get into the story because I think it's just absolutely fucking ridiculous. But I ordered some chicken nuggets as well. Like I said, I'm fat. Leave me alone. <laughs> I got to tell you, the chicken nuggets were great. Um, the chili was awesome. Like, fucking, I love Wendy's chili. I don't know why. I think I think I just love any chili I don't have to cook myself. <laughs> okay, that's about. That's I think that's where my threshold is with that. The lady was like, "Do you want some cheese or some onions on that?" And I was like, "Both." She was like, "Both." I was like, <laughs> "Yes, both." Put the toppings like, on the that's stuff. A bizarre request. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like it's like you know what I want. I want some onion rings. Can you put some onion rings on my chili? Um, <laughs> so those and were even great. If you did. They should oblige. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, come to find out, they didn't have no fucking French fries, so I couldn't even even try the French fries. They ran out of French fries. Now, as I'm getting ready to leave, I'm refilling my Coke, and the dude the, the dude comes walking in, and they're like, dude, did you get the fries? And I was like, yeah, I got the fries. Like, where's the fries? He's like, they're in my trunk. I don't, I don't know where you typically carry fries. I mean... I'm guessing in the back of your personal don't... vehicle is not... The normal did place. He, did he kill those fries? <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so, and where the hell did he go to get the fries? There's not another Wendy's for like fucking 20 <laughs> miles or some shit. Like he went, he went like all the way across town to get the fries. I don't, 
he, like, he probably went like, to did Costco. He pick up the fries a, did he pick up the fries in a back alley somewhere and he didn't <laughs> like what the fries were charging him? So hey, man. Hey, man. Now he gets trunk? I guess some fries. I guess some fries. <laughs> <laughs> you need some fries? He's still cold. <laughs> So yeah, so so that's that's the kind of operation they were running there, man. They didn't even have fucking French fries. Um, oh jeez. Uh, and the baconator. Let me tell you about the baconator, man. If you ever want a sandwich, there's a little bit of bread here, a little bit of bread there, and a whole gob of just meat that is tasteless and dry. It's not good. It's fuck. It's not good. I wish I'd gotten another chili. Are the are the buns still like greasy wet? Yeah, that that was always my beef with uh, so to speak. <laughs> my beef with Wendy's was that their burgers were like wet. Like you'd pick up the sandwich, to, you know, take a bite oh. or whatever, set it down, and your hand was just like oil, wet. Like 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 they fucking deep fried their like like. They're, they, they're donuts. They're non-sweet donuts that they just cut in half <laughs> yes. and hand to you straight out of the fryer, right? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. No, it was not good. It was not good. I should have just stuck with it, with the chicken nuggets and the uh, and the uh, chili. The Mountain Dew, uh, they didn't even have Mountain Dew. Um, they had Dr. Pepper, though, which is my second favorite. Does and the Dr. Pepper. Hmm? Does Dr. Pepper still make you poop? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's number number one flavor ingredient is prune juice. Of course, it's gonna make me poop. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, it wasn't even very good. It was it was not good, not good. Dr Pepper, and I don't know I don't know how you accomplish not good Dr Pepper. That's that's sinful. So I'm not gonna be returning to that Wendy's anytime soon. So um, Wendy's and Carl's Jr. are officially off my my list of places that I will eat. Uh yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to reestablish that about once a decade. That. Yep. <laughs> not going to Wendy's anymore. <laughs> right. I'm about due to go try Denny's again, and uh, <laughs> it probably won't turn out any better. I, I might. I might file an extension on that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Other than that, man, we did some spring cleaning this weekend. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I have a lot more grass than I thought I did in this damn yard. Uh, it took me about six hours of mowing to mow all of it between two days. Holy shit, man! Yeah, because a lot a of lot. it, a lot of it hasn't been mowed in in quite a while. So there's there's like rocks and everything else. So you got to kind of mow it fairly slowly. Plus, I'm like half crippled or some shit. So and and the fucking rocks, man. I'm not talking like these little rocks. Like you know, you go over some gravel and it's like, and you're like, whatever, okay. I just chopped up some fucking granite into smaller pieces of or whatever into smaller pieces of whatever, right? No, I'm talking like boulders. These are like river rocks that you would climb on as a kid in the creek. Like they're 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 bigger than my head, and my head's not small. So, so, so this is like from the glacier melt, like carried <laughs> carried rocks into your yard. The, these are rocks that would have been made cavemen happy. Like I'm I'm actually I, I'm collecting the rocks <laughs> in the backyard. I'm gonna start. I'm I'm gonna build a. Uh, a, a fire pit with these rocks. That's how big they are. Like it's not. I'm not talking like little awesome. rocks. These are not yeah. rocks you throw. These are rocks you shot put. You know. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. They're not pebbles. No. The kids were like. <laughs> so so we have a wagon, a yard wagon, right? And uh, the kids were like like teaming up to pick up some of these rocks and put them in the wagon. And and, and I know they were just doing it dramatically, but holy shit! Like I should have recorded that because they were. It was like the Marx Brothers out there, man. It was funny as hell, just tumbling over each other and couldn't quite figure it out. It was kind of wow. ridiculous. So that's great. I did a little bit of spring cleaning myself, but of a different nature. It wasn't uh, wasn't so much yard work. Um, I've got a lot of shit, and a lot of the shit that I've got is paperwork. <laughs> paperwork that I don't fucking need. It's you, you and Rick. You have that in common. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I I threw away just in this room alone because I had like some some stacks and then some boxes and bags full of things that I thought were important to keep, um, retirement paperwork and like um, you know um, a leave form from like six years ago, um, you know important so, things in, in case you need to go fishing out of state. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, no. So I probably two full like full size kitchen garbage bags full of just paper that I got rid of. 
uh, yeah, and I'm only I'm only just beginning. Hmm. There's um, there's piles of paperwork all over the place in this house, and um, yeah, it's an important thing to uh, downsize unnecessary clutter like that. It, it's it, it will increase your mental health a lot. Oh I, yeah, I, I'm I, sure it will. <laughs> hey, um, when I was in South Carolina, we used to do this little trick. I'm I'm sure you did it too in uh, in Florida when you were stationed there. In South Carolina, if you're on leave, if you're a military member on leave, it, your leave form acts as a fishing license, a, a, a no fee fishing license. So, yeah, or at least it did then. Days. Yeah. So what we would do is on Friday night, instead of getting a fishing license, we would just grab a 988, an old leave, leave form, fill it all out, and we would just sign each other's leave form as if we were the commander or whatever, right? <laughs> That's amazing. So you get like six of us out fishing. And then the park ranger comes up. He's like, yeah, can I see all's fishing license? We all whip out our leaf form. And one night, the park ranger got savvy and saw the two of our signatures matched. And he start, he collected them all again and looked and saw the train where we had all signed each other's leaf form. It was like, I'm going to give you a pass tonight. Don't do it again. Because <laughs> we uh-huh. would just do the leaf form and then just throw it away, you know, never actually file it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, That's amazing, dude. Oh, the, <laughs> the stupid shit we did. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, like I, I got one worse than that. Me and my, uh, like a group of our, our friends when we were airmen at Eglin, like twenty years ago, mm-hmm. we all went out to this this club, and one of my friends forgot his ID card, and the, uh, I, like I think he left his whole wallet at home or some shit. Anyway, so th- this was back when the military ID was black and white, it wasn't a color photo or whatever, and both of us, like we had like similar shape faces, I guess. And you know that your first ID card, it's from basic training. Right. So, so everybody's bald, head. whatever. And uh, well, anyway, so I'm like, fuck, dude. Here, just use my mili- military ID. I'll use my driver's license. Yeah, so I let him go in first, and I let like five or six people go by, mm-hmm. and then I go in, and the guy, he looks at my ID, and well, because my buddy got in, uh-huh. Dude looks at my ID and he's like, he starts to hand it back and he's like, wait, 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 hold on. Grab that dude! <laughs> <laughs> fucking had another bouncer go fucking get my friend and pull him back. He's like, show me your ID. And he <laughs> brings up the ID and the dude looks at him. He's like, all right, you guys are out. And he actually, he held us off to the side. And he was threatening like he was going to call the police on us and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But what he did, one of the bouncers was actually a, a first sergeant at Eglin. Oh, was shit. was part time on the weekends. Yeah. So uh, he basically fed us to the first sergeant and we got lit the fuck up for probably about 10, 15 minutes. And then he let us go. The, the, the problem with, with doing it with you, like using your ID card, is that you have that I.I. at the end. Like, oh, like yeah. It's an immediate yeah. identifier. <laughs> that's a good point yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean how, how many people have the ii and then you're like oh there's two uh two <laughs> second generation schmucks in here hmm yeah well wow. yeah yeah that was a bad plan <laughs> <laughs> you know it was a good plan though oh this weekend we saw the new guardians of the galaxy movie which is what i probably should have done instead of doing yard work have you seen the first one? Uh, the first one, yes. I watched it on video. As opposed to audio? Uh, as opposed to like in the theater. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, man, yeah. Uh, at your earliest opportunity, I, I recommend taking the fam out to see that. Uh, super good, dude. Like it's It captured all of the fun of the first one. Uh, and more so, like it it built upon like previously established relationships, stuff like that. So there was a, like a deeper story. Um, but also two words, baby Groot. <laughs> Dude, take the cutest thing you've ever seen, like on a, you know, whether it's a, a cat video or, you know, uh, a, a baby laughing or whatever, mm-hmm. like the, the cutest video you've ever seen on the internet, triple how cute that is. And then, Play it for two hours. And that was Baby Groot. That sounds awful. So good. I don't know if I can handle that. 
Um, so they, they ghosted out though, so it wasn't like it wasn't overloaded. The, it was uh, like the first here's all the cute you can handle. Move on. Oh, oh, you need another dose cute. of cute. Yeah, I I watched the first one. I thought it was all right. I didn't like. I wasn't as enamored with it as everybody else was. I enjoyed the nostalgia of it. And I enjoyed that I knew nothing about it. So it was like all this new story to me. Mm. But I don't know. I probably just need to watch it again. So I'll probably do that before I see the second one. Because mm. yeah, I, I don't I, know that I was giving it 100% of my attention. I think I actually watched it when I was on leave from mm. Korea or some shit like that. So, Or maybe right after I came back from deployment. I remember not being all into the movie. Mm. But you know what I'm getting yeah. all into, man? What's that? Reddit. Man, you every now and then go on a on a Reddit tear, and I'm just like, oh, you mean the cancer ward? <laughs> like, Reddit's just a shit show to me. It's and, and maybe that's why I'm just now like really into it and actually making comments and being being an active member. Uh, I I just I started looking up division shit in Reddit, and uh, there's all kinds of different forms and stuff like that, and it was great. And then I went on to some podcasting stuff and went went through a tear of that and like, man, I'm I'm just enjoying it. I maybe it's just I've I've found the right the right groups not to just be, you know, infected with the web hiv, but <laughs> right. I'm fucking loving it, man. It's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Every now, yeah. I mean, I, okay, I will every now and then come up across a page like well, like the Diamond Club Reddit, for example, is is an excellent place to go and read, or even contribute, mm-hmm. uh, but. But yeah, just Reddit as a whole, man. Like, just go out. Like, you like hitting the random button? No. Mm. That is, like, the worst possible thing that anyone can do is go to reddit.com. And well, push it, it, it no. might help that I've been that I've been, uh, I've been been surfing Reddit at work during the downtime, uh, uh, so I can't okay. hit the re- random button. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that and also you're doing it at work. I mean, anything's better than work, so... Well, we have a lot of downtime in the, in the middle st- midst of waiting for more PQDRs to turn be turned in. Uh, so, yeah. Or <laughs> yay work, <laughs> yay work. Um, hey, so this podcast is a little bit of work. Uh, we we put a lot of effort into it, and there are some uh, some second generation schmucks out there that that help us with that. There's a, actually quite a few of them, probably more than we deserve. But don't make that stop you from going over to. Reddit or to reddit.com to uh, <laughs> patreon.com slash ritual misery and becoming one of our second generation schmucks that helps make this show a helps us helps give a um my wife's not as mad because we uh we get a little cash <laughs> dude you just like pulled a Bryce Castillo <laughs> you smell toast <laughs> So what Amos is trying to say is go over to <laughs> patreon.com slash ritual misery. Give a fuck. Give us a buck. Uh, it really helps us out, man. It it gives us a currency that we can use to pay for the, the things that we need to make this show happen. Man, every now and then we need a new microphone. We need a new um, – I just got a new webcam not super long ago that, that patrons helped me pay for. Um, all yeah. of the things that we do, like when we go to South by Southwest, it helps with that kind of stuff. Um, but that's but it's not just a one way street though, Amos. We like to give our patrons things as well. Yeah, uh, you'll find exclusive stuff on there. Some of the post shows, some pre shows. Um, right now, you can actually find the uh, the the, uh, the I was gonna say the J- Julia Young. God, I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> toast. So, <laughs> toast. Where's the toast? So so let it be known that at 28 minutes into this podcast, I had a stroke. Uh, <laughs> The Gloria Young interview is on there right now. Um, it, it, it'll, it'll, it, the, it, it's the full, pretty much the full uh, interview. It's gonna be trimmed down a little bit. There's gonna be some of it that uh, that is cut out for the for the full release for the for the actual like public release. But if you you're, if you're interested in that, you want to hear some funny stories about Justin and Robert Young. You want to hear uh, just some good tales from from a, a very classy lady actually. Uh, cruise on over to patreoncom misery and become a patron. Check that out. It's about 48 minutes long or something like that. It's really awesome. So yep. there you go. Um, dude. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird just having you and I, man. 
I know. It's, it's like, what do we do even? This is usually where we talk to our guests about the stuff that they do. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Jack Aaron says stroke it. <laughs> <laughs> not, not on the air, Jack. Not on the air. The um, stroke to the right. So here, here's a couple here's a couple of things. I've got a, a, a couple of things that uh, – have you ever seen an MRI of your body? I have not. I'm going to tell you right now. It's the coolest fucking thing ever. Yeah? It's uh, – it, there's a personal like if you look at pictures and things like that, it's 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 one thing. You're like, oh, that's nice. If, if you're in the picture, you're like, oh, look at the funny face I was making. When you see <laughs> MRI images of your body parts, like there's a certain investment there that you're just like, wow. So, okay. so that's that's actually going on in my knee or in my back or in my head. Wow. Because you don't know. I mean, like, it's not like you tear like, yourself apart and look, in, look at your inner parts, you know? That's like video, right? You're not talking about stills. You're talking about video, right? No, it's it's stills, but it's oh. it's layered stills. Like, there's a new picture every millimeter or whatever. Oh, I got you. Okay, I follow. Yeah, yeah. so you can actually, like, scroll through it and it's like, you know, look at the entire body part. And I was thinking about that uh, this week when I was getting having my back looked at again. Like, man, that's just some really cool shit. Like, I recommend if you haven't uh, if you haven't broken a bone really severely or torn a ligament or uh, or, or uh, had some sort of brain damage, like go do that just for the MRIs. Like it's worth it, man. It's totally worth it to to speak with a like uh, for the rest of your life just to see the inside of your body, man. It's really cool. So, <laughs> oh my God, just crash headfirst off of a motorcycle without a helmet. Uh, I, 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 don't know if, I, don't, I don't know if I'm prescribing death, man. I mean, you could just like slam your head in a door once or twice, you know, and then <laughs> just, just long enough to start bleeding out of the ear, you know, and then just cruise on in, into the uh, ER. Uh, Depending on what state ear, you're in, you a, might be able to get a free one for uh, until Senate passes some shit. Um, another. <laughs> uh, now, now. Yeah. Another oh, story. I, I know you didn't see this. I, I happen to see this. Um, uh, this is on uh, Board Panda, which is one of my favorite sites now, by the way. Have you ever seen this site? It's completely ridiculous, and I fucking love it. Nicki Minaj says she'll pay off fans' college tuition if they have good grades. Like all of her fans? Well, for a limited time. I mean, so, I'll be a Nicki Minaj fan real quick to pay off some student debt. I mean... Right. So she paid... Uh, saw somewhere there's a thing she ended up paying like according to the the twitter run like thirty thousand dollars in tuition expenses for all these that's people that sent awesome, her man. yeah that i mean that, that's that that's, makes me a fan as it is see i love Nicki minaj as it is because she's she's got fake butt she's got fake tits she's had her face done her nose done and she's out there going it's natural bitches like <laughs> okay <laughs> That and her songs are fucking catchy. I'm sorry, they're catchy. I, I love the shit. Um, but then she's gonna go and do something like this. Like this is just like you know what? I'm 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 in a mood on a on a Sunday afternoon. Why not? Yeah, yeah. No, this is really cool because I mean, thirty thousand dollars for someone that makes as much money as she probably makes, just a drop in the bucket. But for the people that she helped, it means the world to them. That's mm -hmm. life changing to a lot of these people. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, her first tweet says, show me straight A's that I can verify with your school and I'll pay it. Who wants to join that contest? Dead serious. Should I set it up? And that's uh, that's in response to a fan that, that asked about it. And holy shit, dude. Like, this is... I, I just need to start going on Twitter and start asking people shit. Like, hey, um, you, want, you want to just give us $30,000 to make our podcast better? <laughs> How many retweets for some chicky nugs? <laughs> oh my god! I, I got to tell you though, words, I guess. those fucking chicken nuggets are pretty good. <laughs> 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 I'm not, I'm not kidding at all, at all. Um, but yeah, so this is, uh, this is just one of those things, man. This is just, just uh, an artist reaching out to her fans and doing something really, really awesome. That's pretty sweet. Plus, I mean, it, it, how does it hurt her though, right? Because if if she's got a bunch of her fans sending in straight A's, how, that's not going to hurt her image. Like, oh my God, Nicki Minaj's no. fans get good grades. Yeah, you know? no, I, yeah, exactly. There's there's no downside to this for her. 
Yeah. I mean, other than she's paying this money, but it's like I said, that's it's not much money. It's probably her. a write off, you know. And that it absolutely is. It so. very much is. But I mean, still, I mean, you don't get all that money back. Uh, well, no, but gave, uh, you know, it's it's but it's still it helps. Yeah. If she if she gave thirty thousand dollars, she'd probably get I don't know a few thousand of that back maybe. Um, so it's still I mean it's a significant amount of money. Yeah, yeah. It's um I don't know L- little things like that. How can she verify without breaking some privacy laws? I'm I'm sure she's got you know a lawyer that can make the phone calls and say hey. Uh, can you know blah 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 some some waivers some NDAs or whatever the hell you want to call or, it or maybe they just have the um, the the student like if you want me to pay this off then you you get you an have official your official transcript from uh, school mailed trans- by a lawyer or, or yeah or just just mail the tran- just have the school mail the transcript yep and that's that's as official and this as you is get. one of those things like she she did this for a lot of people but if she just did it for one still awesome. Yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, she can come pay my student student tuition off, my student loans off, all zero dollars <laughs> of them because I am an idiot and I didn't never got a degree. Yet, yet, yet. You got an associate's though, right? I do, but it didn't cost me anything. I guess. Yeah, it, right. I mean, I paid. Uh, no, I, the, the military paid for all that for my little yep. uh, associate's degree. Yep. So. All right, hey, um, uh, it's about time for this right. Oh, the hell's my button? Gaver Tully, five dangerous things you should let your kids do, and I think it, it's I think it's actually eight that he describes in this video. Um, Something like because he had like five A and five B. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So he just kept going. He's like, they haven't shut me up yet. I'm going to keep talking. I got more slides. More slides. He said five twice. Like, he was like, all right, so here's number five. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, and then he's yep, like, all right, and, and, and uh, on to number five. And that, and that was 5B, and then there's like five and a half. And there's, but it's only five. It's it's no more than five. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> no more than two. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's uh, – why don't you, you you're the one that brought this up actually why don't you uh, explain what it is so basically gaver tolly uh he runs a school for i don't even know if it's a school it it's, sounds like an after school activity or a summer it, camp it's, or something. yeah it's like really. a summer camp i think but it's the tinkering school yeah he, he basically just you send your kids to this to this place and they just like break shit and build shit and set things on fire and just play with like power tools and uh things that you normally wouldn't let a small child play with um this is anywhere from what i think five is when he starts yeah with the, the kids like five to ten or five to twelve or something like that well he specifically mentioned second graders so you're looking at like seven to eight right there yeah and so basically it's he lets these kids explore like in a safe environment like the the um like the clickbaitiness of this is dangerous things you shouldn't let your kids do. Or actually, he says dangerous things you should let your kids do. Uh, but the the real thing is that he's doing this in a safe environment. He's providing a safe environment for children to explore with these things. Right. Uh, fire. Uh, like I said, power tools. They take apart appliances. Pocket and, knives. He says give your kid a pocket knife. Right. Um, right. It's like, yeah, your kids are going to get hurt. Yeah. But they're not almost for sure not going to kill themselves right it's not a matter it's not a matter of of shielding them from all danger it's a matter of of um uh, constraining the dangerous part of it while they are they can openly and freely learn about the dangers of the world right and giving them the confidence to uh, you know if you if you are able to wield a knife or any sort of a tool for that matter uh, play with fire things like that if you're given the opportunity and the freedom to learn how these things work as a child, you're not going to be intimidated by things like that when you get older. Right. Um, I know I've, I've met a lot of grownups that like won't get around a fire because they, it freaks them out uh, because they've never just, they were never exposed to it. And they, they were never in Indiana throwing uh, M eighties into a big ass fucking uh, bonfire out in the cornfield somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Or, uh, or Mountain Dew bottles with gasoline in them. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody has their own learning curve, right? 
<laughs> no, I'm I'm on board with this guy though. Uh, there, I don't know. There was a couple things that I thought were a little weird. Like he's like, you know, let your child drive a car. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe if it was in a controlled space. Well, and... uh, he he specifically mentions put him put the child in your lap in an open parking lot with no nothing else around, and let them drive while they're in your lap so that they can learn to control the the steering wheel at least. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Right, my so, grandpa totally did that with me driving down the highway in Indiana, fifty yeah. on uh, Highway Fifty Two. <laughs> was it was it paid back then? <laughs> it was. It was. It was like um, <laughs> it was like just a thin uh, layer of uh, of uh, of tar on the uh, tar. Yeah, uh, it was just tar uh, over uh, rocks on, on, on rocks. <laughs> Which honestly is not much much worse than it is now. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. It's like uh, uh, no, pothole most, highway. And I'm, I'm completely on board with this guy. Like I, I'm I'm all about it. I've I've always tried to expose my kids to certain uh, you know activities. Like um, I used to when Lucas was little in particular, we used to go out in the garage and build things. Like mm. just you know not anything in particular. It's whatever he wanted to build. But I would teach him how to use. You know, like a hammer and nails, um, you know, a screwdriver with screws and, uh, you know, just b- different things. And we just take wood. Uh, we would cut it to how, whatever size he decided it needed to be. And then we would just figure out a way to put it together. And, mm. you know, we made like things that look like birdhouses, but weren't necessarily birdhouses. And I don't know, just a bunch of different things. And I, I, I think this is just fantastic. I mean, it was a birdhouse. It may not have been ever occupied, but it was a birdhouse. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yeah, and, and, and there's a, uh, Jotman says, uh, getting hurt while young is called learning. Getting hurt while old is called being stupid. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah. that's, that's valid. about right. That's valid. And there's <laughs> one one thing that kills me is around here, a lot of kids will drive little ATVs and, uh, you know, uh, uh, dirt bikes and shit like that. Some of them are like eight, six years old, and they're just riding around the neighborhood, but they're riding with traffic. Mm. And they're driving like twice as fast as traffic can go on the side of the road. And they're like doing jumps and shit. And I'm just like. Yeah. 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 Like it's, it, I, I get scared for them. Just the, just to be <laughs> a, being a father. Now, uh, Poodle Buncher just does mention, uh, you know, shooting guns and things like that. And I do take my kids out to the firing range and, and teach them yeah. how to shoot. Um, Cause I've got a pistol and, and a pair of shotguns. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. I was talking about my grandpa earlier. Um, I was thinking about my, my childhood and, and, um, difference between like being at grandpa's house and being at home. My mom was kind of a worry wart and she tried to shield me from all danger. I mean, she didn't want me to, you know, play with fire or guns or anything like that, but I'd go to grandpa's house. We'd go in the backyard and shoot guns or pop pop the 22 uh, all day. Yeah. Or just, you know, or, or be, like he he wanted to give me a BB gun when I was like five. My mom was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, just, yeah, whatever. Yep. Grandpa was the one that, that put me on his lap to drive the car down the highway. Uh, mom would have had probably a literal heart attack if I had even told her that he did that. Yep. Um, like, you know, just, I don't know. I, I think you need, you need some balance. You don't need one like uh, I was gonna say, one parent, but like, you know, your your parents or your your upbringing to just be like constantly thrust into danger, right? You know, I think I think there needs to be some balance. Like maybe maybe one parent that's that's adventurous with the the kid, and the other parent that's kind of like a, uh, you know, more of a worrier or whatever, so that you you find that balance. You know, the kid gets to do certain things, but not just given you know, free for all. All right, kid. Uh, it's it's eight o'clock in the morning. Go have fun out there in the shed. See you at dinner time. You know, uh, there needs to be some balance there. Some some supervision of the activities yeah. and things like that. Um, uh, it was asked in the in the uh, in the chat room, and we do not have any new Amos's Balls submissions this week. Feel free to send those to at uh, Ritual Misery on Twitter. And if you do that, I will chase them down and try to get them on the show. I'm still working on a couple that we have. Uh, outstanding. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Another way to do that would be on uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery. If you are a patron, you can send us a patron message. Mm. And that's a that's another way to request an Amos's Balls uh, guest, guest chase down. What do we want to call that? Hmm. 
uh, guest pursuit. <laughs> I don't know. It all sounds bad. <laughs> we will oh. go to their house. We'll treat them like a bag of French fries and put them in the trunk. <laughs> Hey, you got the balls. I got the balls. Where are the balls? They're in the trunk. <laughs> oh, my God. This reminds me of Pulp Fiction. He's like, Zed, it's Maynard. Spider's caught a couple of flies. <laughs> Get the gimp. Oh, man. Gimp's sleeping. <laughs> I don't care. Get Wake him up. <laughs> that, that, that whole show, man. Just, God, the, the show was fucking hilarious. Oh, man. Hey, um... That's a that's about it for the week, man. What a quick show. It was, dude. And we we went almost a full hour and it was just me and you shooting the shit. That's it's kind of nuts. It's I mean, kind of crazy. It's not Amos's nuts. <laughs> that's a separate segment. Yeah, that's totally different. That's that, we don't that, do that's that. That's a show. <laughs> that, that's not on air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't make the 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 main show. Um <clears throat> Man, oh, what one more thing that I do want to point out though, mm-hmm. um, Guardians of the Galaxy two, the the greatest thing by far about that movie was Baby Groot, and uh, I thought how cool would it be to be able to get like a like a stuffed animal, you know, like a like a, a baby Groot, like a like a teddy bear kind okay. of deal, you know, wouldn't, like a wouldn't plushie? That just be a sapling in the yard. Kind of, well, I mean. Yeah, but like a soft one because when you watch this, it looks oh he's so cute and you just want to just hold him and like man, wouldn't it be cool if there was a place that I could go and get a plush baby Groot? And it turns out that there is what? Yes, a dude, plush baby. But the movie just came out. Well, here's the thing: I went to Amazon uh-huh. first to uh-huh. see if I could find a a, a baby Groot plushie. Yeah, and they have them for like thirty nine ninety five. Well, okay. Like, I mean, that, that's. I mean, you, you spent forty bucks going to the theater to see the movie anyway. So that's, true, I mean, that's not. But, I mean, forty forty is a bit steep, you know. Yeah. So I was like, oh, you know what? I know of another site, geekandgamergear dot com. Yeah. I was like, ah, uh, you know, their selection isn't as as great as Amazon. They probably won't have it. Right, dude. They fucking have a baby Groot plush. So, so what you're telling and, me is you can go to geekandgamergear dot com. Geek yep. the letter N gamergear dot com. Yep, yep. And get a baby Groot plush. Yep. And ten percent off, right? Because we have a ten percent off code, so you get like ten percent off forty bucks. Well, see that 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 would be a good deal right there if you yeah, got four dollars off of like, forty that's, bucks. Right? That's saving ten. That's like four bucks right there, man. So that's good. But get this shit, dude. Okay. Gamergear dot com is not Amazon dot com. They weren't selling it for forty bucks. They're selling it for eleven dollars. What? Eleven dollars, and that's before the ritual misery discount. You're kidding? No, nope, I swear to God. Like you're blowing smoke straight up my asshole right now. I swear to Groot, <laughs> it is only eleven dollars. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, go check it out. It is it's really cool stuff over there at geekandgamergear.com. And if you use ritual misery at checkout, you will get ten percent off your whole order. Um, they got a lot of cool stuff. It's really cool. Um, low prices uh there's a there's a couple things on there that that can get a little pricey but almost all of the things that i look at are really really reasonably priced so it's it's really cool stuff so check it out geekandgamergear.com that's insane like i just looked it up it's 11 dollars. it's 11 (laughs) dollars. it's for reals man it's for reals for reals you're not even bullshitting me right now (laughs) that's insane all right hey man uh where can people find more of you if they if this chat wasn't long enough if they needed more they need more more kent more kent Oh, pe- people can stalk me on on Twitter, man, or th- they could even communicate directly with me. That's that would be actually really cool. Let, let's uh, let's be honest. They could, st- they could stalk you in Alamogordo. Like it's a small town. They'd be able to find you within a day or two. Oh, you'd be, yeah. That, it wouldn't take long. <laughs> it would not take long to track me down. Um, at rm underscore del noche on Twitter. I am del noche just about everywhere else. To include Untapped, if you like beer and you're on Untapped, check me out there. I'm del noche. What about you, man? Um, Ethan Kane on Twitter and Ethan Kane on um, uh, Untapped, so easy to find. You know, it doesn't have an Untapped account, which maybe we should. Maybe we should like make a beer club, the Ritual Misery Beer Club. At Ritual Misery, the Ritual Misery Beer Club. I'm thinking we, that's what we need. We need that. 
We need we need somebody to figure out how to do that. We need a Ritual Misery Beer Club. Maybe, maybe that's a group within Untapped. Because you can do groups now. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Should make somebody somebody send happen. us ideas on how how do we make that work. But yeah, hit us hmm. up. Podcast at RitualMisery.com. You can also hit us up on our subreddit. What is it? RitualMisery.reddit.com? Sure. Sounds good. Sure. If you want to just comment on this episode in particular, you can go on over there. It'll be posted. Uh, as soon as it's published, it'll be po- posted on there. You can make your comments directly on the episode itself. Um, you can also go to RitualMisery.com for all of our other stuff. Hey, man, we got some really cool music I'm going to play right now. It's brought to you by Kevin McLeod over on Incomptech.com. And yep. he also makes the intro music, in fact. We've got great music. We've got great chat room right here. Uh, you can catch us live. Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv. See ya. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 